For the longest time, VR felt like something that was only possible in the movies. Then the Oculus Rift arrived. Suddenly, virtual reality was, well, a reality. And it didn't cost tens of thousands of dollars either. You could pick up a Rift headset for just about 600 bucks, but even then, the Rift felt like a niche device that was a glimpse of what was possible. It was bulky, it had little software, and it was almost certain to give you motion sickness. As more headsets launched, the technology continued to evolve, reducing the weight of the device, building larger libraries of software, and reducing motion sickness triggers. But even now, it still feels like the technology is aimed at early adopters. Maybe VR wasn't the future after all. Then in 2021, Facebook announced that it was changing its name to Meta, short for Metaverse, and the VR conversation went mainstream. The company had actually purchased Oculus all the way back in 2014, but its focus had been mainly on gaming. This was different. Meta made the proclamation that they were going to create the Metaverse. At first, I thought Mark Zuckerberg had been watching too many Marvel movies. Then I realized that he was serious about Facebook across the metaverse. His vision was to create an online space where people could have a second life. They'd be avatars, do work online in otherworldly environments, and even own property. If that sounds like Ready Player One, that's because it was attempting to be exactly that. It was ambitious, but if it worked, Meta would be the company to own the metaverse. But since they made that proclamation back in 2021, we've barely seen any progress on that front. The flagship metaverse experience is an app called Horizon Worlds, which is available in just seven regions around the world. It claims to have around 200,000 active users, which may sound impressive at first, but it's well below the 500,000 user mark the company was targeting for by the end of 2022. And worse, Meta has faced a lot of criticism for its app, with many calling it lifeless, dull, unfinished, and buggy. Considering the billions of dollars poured into the project, it's been disappointing on a number of levels. There are a bunch of problems with the app, including the fact that Meta promised that its virtual reality platform could mimic the real world, allowing users to be both productive and social. If you're actually trying to use the app to be productive, you might run into slight problems. When you have the headset on, it's kind of difficult to use a keyboard and a mouse. Some of us can type without looking at the keyboard, but no one, and I mean no one, can find their mouse on the first try without lifting their headset. It's just not possible. And in case that doesn't break your immersion, the social side fares even worse. Users have weird legless avatars with faces that look like me's who just realize their creators are never coming back. And the chat rooms are filled with tweens, making it not a very fun place for most people to hang out. The issues go far deeper than just improving the visuals of the experience though. There have been concerns about parental controls, reports of harassment, bullying. While I'd love to say I believe Meta can fix these issues with time, seeing as the company just laid off a few thousand employees and expressed an interest in investing in artificial intelligence, I doubt we'll be seeing them make any leaps and bounds anytime soon. Now, before we all write off VR entirely though, we should also discuss the many ways in which it has actually been a success. For starters, there are plenty of non-commercial uses for VR, especially for simulation, training, design, and more. At the John Hopkins School of Nursing, there's VR training at all levels with a focus on resuscitation, anaphylactic reactions, post-surgical management, and more. This helps medical professionals hone their surgical skills. Virtual reality has also proven itself in manufacturing and design. At the Ford Immersion Lab in Dearborn, Michigan, designers and engineers can explore a prototype in a three-dimensional digital space. This allows for instant feedback, continuous improvements, and a quicker, more complete evaluation of a product before it's actually made. These are all really exciting proof of concepts, but none are what we'd call mainstream yet, which is part of the problem of VR. It promises to be the future, but I don't really see many people clamoring to get into the virtual world just yet. 
So far though, gaming has been where VR has found most of its success. VR gaming revenue already exceeds $1.1 billion annually and is expected to reach $2.4 billion by 2024. That's probably because gamers on both PC as well as PlayStation have had access to high quality immersive experiences. Half-Life Alex has a whopping 93 on Metacritic and has been described as one of the most innovative gaming experiences on the market. Players can also use a variety of accessories including steering wheels to make VR gaming even more immersive. On the new PSVR 2, gamers can drop themselves into the world of Horizon Call of the Mountain or get behind the wheel of a supercar in Gran Turismo 7. The benefits for racing sim fans are especially noticeable because headsets replace the need for multiple display setups commonly used for racing rigs. But when it comes to VR gaming, the biggest complaint with the current slate of headsets is the price. The level of entry is just too high. While there are headsets like the MetaQuest that are standalone devices, the headsets that feature the latest tech and software require either a PlayStation 5 or a PC capable of running that software. You're probably going to be spending $1,000 Canadian just to get up and running. But once you do though, you'll be able to play incredible titles like Resident Evil 4, Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, and Beat Saber. Virtual reality may be the poster child of the reality technologies, but both augmented and mixed reality devices have just as much, if not more, mass market potential. Augmented reality headsets are designed to be transparent, like a pair of glasses, and can display information about the world around you. If anyone remembers Google Glass, or better yet, the Microsoft HoloLens, it's a lot like that. And mixed reality headsets combine the two, allowing users to experience the immersion of virtual reality while interacting with the world around them. The current, uses of, the current uses of augmented and mixed reality are a bit limited, but the ideas are there. Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg has suggested that technology has the potential to match the usefulness of smartphones, calling them a holy grail device that could redefine our relationship with technology. And Apple might believe the same. As their first major product launch since 2014, the Vision Pro shows Apple's belief in the future of mixed reality. According to Apple CEO Tim Cook, the upcoming Apple headset is less about connecting users in a virtual space and more about being an infinite computer screen that floats in front of you. Basically, the device lets you overlay digital windows and buttons in the real world. Unlike Meta's VR headsets, you're able to fully see and interact with your surroundings. You won't be fumbling for your mouse, bumping into your table, or getting jump scared by your cat. Okay, I can't promise on that last one, but the possibilities of AR and MR go so much further than that. We talked earlier about the ways that VR is helping with education, but AR can take that even further. Mercedes currently uses HoloLens 2 Windows Mixed Reality headset to help technicians deal with complex repairs and services. The system lets the technician basically video call other experts within the company to help document and assist with a particular service. Given how complicated modern cars are, the ability to have a wiring diagram in your eyeglasses or overlaid on top of a vehicle is a huge asset. Augmented reality can also help those with visual impairments. The eSight 4 and the upcoming eSight Go are designed to help those with macular degeneration and other vision loss conditions, and can help provide them with enhanced vision. These are just some of the incredible ways that technology is helping people. The possibilities are endless. So is virtual reality a bust? It's tough to say. Technology is changing at a faster pace than ever before, but this is one that still needs time to develop. It's true, it hasn't managed to find mainstream success yet in the way that other gaming or smart home technologies have, but computers didn't become a household device for decades. But that's where augmented and mixed reality come in, tying the digital world and the real worlds together. They might be used primarily in business and education at first, but as technology and humans evolve together, we may see that they find their way into our everyday lives as well. Or maybe I'm wrong, and we'll be living in virtual worlds if we aren't already. 
The current uses of the current uses of augmented and mixed reality are a bit limited, but the ideas are there. Mark CEO, oh, I keep doing that. Mark CEO, Meta Zuckerberg. Meta Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs>